155. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed, and blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known. And from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, son of Shilil, governor of Judah, and Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you that saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehozadak, the high priest, take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the promises that I made you when you came out of Egypt, my spirit abides among you, do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts. Once again, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the seas and the dry land. And I will shake all the nations so that the treasure of all nations shall come. And I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, said the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning's psalm is Psalm 98, which is the second one in your bulletin. Let us read Psalm 98 responsibly by half verse. <clears throat> Sing to the Lord a new song. For he is the song of all the saints. With his right hand and his holy arm. He 
He has won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness has been broken in the He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord all your lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp. With the harp and the song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it. The land is those who dwell there. Let the rivers clap their hands. And let the hills bring out the joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world. And the peoples in equity. from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. As to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our being gathered together to him, we beg you, brothers and sisters, not to be quickly shaken in mind or alarmed, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as though from us to the effect that the day of the Lord is already here. Let no one deceive you in any way, for that day will not come unless the rebellion comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one destined for destruction. He opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, declaring himself to be God. Do, not, do you not remember that I told you these things when I was still with you? But we must always give thanks to God for you, brothers and sisters, beloved by the Lord, because God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification, by the Spirit and through belief in the truth. For this purpose he called you through our proclamation of the good news, so that you may obtain the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who loved us and through grace gave us eternal comfort and good hope, comfort your hearts and strengthen them in every good work and word. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. There came to Jesus some Sadducees, those who say there is no resurrection. They asked him a question. Teacher, Moses wrote for us that if a man's brother dies, leaving a wife but no children, the man shall marry the widow and raise up children for her brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married and died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and so in the same way, all seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. In the resurrection, therefore, whose wife will the woman be? For the seven had married her. Jesus said to them, those who belong to this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are worthy of a place in that age and in the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Indeed, they cannot die anymore because they are like angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection and the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God not of the dead, but of the living. For to him all of them are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm looking forward to when the polls close on Tuesday. <laughs> we live in a time of high anxiety, where looking at the two major political parties in our country, each party has a large contingent of people who believe that our country will be destroyed if the other party predominates in the elections on Tuesday. And that kind of wound up anxiety and a kind of hyperbolic way of thinking and talking about who will lead our country at every level of government is not actually so different from what's going on in many of these readings that we have this morning. First reading from the prophet Haggai. They're in a situation where the temple is destroyed, they are being ruled by a foreign power, and the governor of Judah, the high priest of the temple and the people at large are all in despair. They think this is the way it's going to be forever. And what God says to them through the prophet is, take courage. Take courage, Zerubbabel. Take courage, Joshua. Take courage, people, because the Lord says, take courage, all you people, work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts, according to the promise that I made to you when you came out of Egypt. My spirit abides among you. Do not fear. Fear not is the most common commandment in Holy Scripture. Fear not. When we stop fearing, we can truly hear what other people are saying. When other people stop fearing, they can hear what we are truly saying. Fear not. And the way the people are to move from fear 
To know fear is to remember God's promise to be with them always. In Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, there's a different but similar situation going on. This is in the early years of the Christian movement. They weren't even called Christians or Christianity at that point in time. They were people of the way, people following Jesus, who they had come to believe was the Messiah, whom they had been told was raised from the dead. And because he had been raised from the dead, they too would have that experience. But they understood that it was going to happen in their lifetimes. And it hadn't yet. And maybe they missed it. And the anxiety among the Thessalonians was ratcheting up. And they were beginning to doubt the truth of what they had been told because they had a preconceived idea of when and how their resurrection would happen. And so Paul's response to them in this letter is, please, brothers and sisters, don't be shaken. Don't let fear take over your trust in what we have told you. Toward the end of that passage, Paul says, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught by us, either by word of mouth or by our letter. Just as in the passage from Haggai, the prophet is told to redirect the people to the remembrance of God's promises to them through Abraham. So in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, Paul recalls them to what he has taught them about the traditions. And what are the traditions? He says in other letters, I pass on to you what I myself have received. That at supper Jesus took bread and gave thanks and gave it to those present and said, this is my body. And he took the cup of wine and said, this is my blood poured out for you. And he passes on to them the eyewitness accounts of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. The traditions that Paul is pointing the people back to are not what do we always have for Thanksgiving dinner every year. The traditions are the very core and grounding of the people's faith that Jesus is the Messiah and that they can let go of their fear and trust in what they have been told by those who are personal witnesses to the resurrection from the dead. Moving from fear to no fear. And in the gospel according to Luke, it's a little bit different situation. We have all witnessed this. If you, watch, if you still watch the news on TV or YouTube or wherever you get your news from, we've all had the experience of witnessing someone ask a politician a gotcha question. Everybody know what a gotcha question is? Yeah. The Sadducees think they have come up with a really good gotcha question for Jesus. The Sadducees were a sect within Judaism who do, did not believe that there was such a thing as the resurrection of the dead. There, was, uh, there were multiple opinions about this in Judaism at that time. Jesus very clearly was teaching about the reality of resurrection from the dead. And so the Sadducees think they have figured out a way, using the law, to catch him out. And so they make up this hypothetical about a woman who her husbands keep dying. I mean, she ends up, and they're all brothers, and she ends up marrying one after another, seven brothers. They all die, and then finally she dies. Okay, so according to the law, Whose wife will she be if there's really a resurrection? She can't have more than one husband, right? Jesus doesn't buy into their worldview, which is shaped by a reading of the surface things that are going on. In Haggai, the people were reacting to the surface of what was going on. And in Thessalonians, the people 
their fear was coming from the surface appearance of what was going on. And so Jesus doesn't buy into this hypothetical that focuses on the surface stuff. He patiently, though I think with some irritation, makes the point to the Sadducees that they have misunderstood Holy Scripture. That in this world, in this world, we live a certain way, but when we die, we leave our bodies behind. We do not carry the fullness of physical life into the resurrected life, which we will experience, because after we leave our bodies behind, we are pure soul. That's the point that Jesus is making. And then Jesus goes on to do something interesting, because you have to wonder what all the people gathered around, what was going through their mind as they listened to the Sadducees present their gotcha question to Jesus. Certainly there had to have been some fear that maybe, maybe this Jesus is wrong. Maybe he's teaching us something that's not true. That would affect our relationship with God and endanger it. So I think there was bubbling up in that crowd some fear as they listened to the Sadducees present their gotcha question. Jesus does the same thing that Paul and the prophet Haggai speaking for God does. He points them back and he says, <clears throat> Moses himself, he points them back to the very foundation of the Jewish faith. Even before the exodus from Egypt, Jesus points them back to that moment where Moses encounters God in the burning bush that doesn't burn up, where he, for the first time, has a direct encounter with the living God. And that's the point that Jesus makes to those in the crowd. And the fact that the dead are raised, Moses himself showed in the story about the bush, where he speaks of the Lord as the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. The world will not come to an end, no matter who wins and loses on Tuesday. Do I need to say that again? <laughs> It is so easy, and with, with social media, with all of the ways that we have of being presented with information, however factual or fantasy-laden it may be, with all of the um, just tidal wave of information that we're presented with, it is easy to become fearful. It's easy to buy into the kind of language that we hear and find ourselves becoming anxious and fearful about what the future holds for us. The world will not come to an end. And the promise that God made to the people who would become the people of Israel when he encountered Moses in the burning bush, when he promised at the Exodus, that they would become his people and he would be their God and he would travel with them wherever they went. When Jesus points us back to that moment and Paul points the Thessalonians back to what has been faithfully passed on from those who were eyewitnesses, those who were present to hear Jesus' teaching, to see the miracles, to encounter him after his resurrection. That constant, faithful promise of God that there is more to our lives than the years that we are blessed with on this earth, that we are deeply and above all souls and have been given and promised the gift of eternal life when we leave our bodies behind and that that world is different from this world. 
That's what we need to remember. And when we remember that, everything else kind of shakes out. Everything else takes its proper place in importance. We are called to be people of the way, to follow Jesus in his teaching and in his way of life as best we can from one day to the next, and to trust that the promises of God are faithful and true and eternal. This world will pass away, but in the age to come, as many have said over the millennia, all will be well, because we have been promised by the living God that all will be well. Amen. 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 Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nazi. <coughs> we believe in the one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God. Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was saved man. For our sake he was crucified under the cross of Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in the world with the just to live in the dead, and to the kingdom of the life of men. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord. Jane Battles and family, 
Bruce and Kate Thomas and family, Kathy, Aaliyah, Niana, and Tania, Brandon Jr. and Carter. And for all who suffer from any grief or trouble, give to Howard and Helen Cardeau and all the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share your let us now pause and pray for our own needs and those of others, either silently or aloud. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against our neighbor, against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you, and in our word and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we will only repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will. And walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Clay Matthews, who, uh, who is fairly high up in the Episcopal Church, and my mouth just did this thing that my brain had nothing to do with. <laughs> Clay McMullen 
and Michelle Benz, which the two of you stand up, please. They are going to be married uh, next September, and I'm going to officiate, and it's going to be glorious and wonderful. <laughs> We're glad, glad you're here today. Um, Let's see, backpacks. Who wants to give an announcement about backpacks? <laughs> okay, I will. <laughs> um, as you know, we have a tradition of um, filling backpacks for Christmas for children and this year for adults as well. These go to folks who otherwise, they don't have Christmas. So um, the backpacks are in the guild room. And uh, I think somebody will hopefully be there to, you have to make sure that the same number is on the backpack and on the sheet on the clipboard next to your name. Sue will be there. Sue will be there. Okay, thank you, Sue. So Sue will be there to take care of that. The pretty colored backpacks are for the children and the, you know, kind of boring black and navy blue, those are for the grown-ups. But, if you're able to take one or even two backpacks, you will make all the difference in the world for someone at Christmas time. So if you're able to do that, thank you. Uh, Lucy, you're patiently waiting, I think, to make okay. an announcement. Yeah, I have to begin my reassuring people. This is only going to go on a couple more weeks. <laughs> um, and then, then I will be done with announcements. But well, now we've been having a good time. We have been having yeah. a good time. And, so, and the campaign is continuing to go well. So this is your week five update. So this past week, we got nine more pledges for next year for a total commitment of $11,880, which, as you can see, and by the way, Debbie Cole and Randy who created this, they're like, Lucy, why aren't you coloring in the steeple like we talked about? Because I thought it was too beautiful and I was afraid I'd hurt it, so that's why we have the bar. But we are at, um, our goal is to raise $165,000 in pledges for next year, and we're at 78% of our goal. And um, our goal is to have 80 pledges for next year, and we have 57, which is 71%. So we've got a couple more weeks. A lot of faces as I'm looking out. I know you've already returned your pledge cards. Thank you very much for that. For those who haven't turned in pledge cards, please, please do. Because the vestry, and Anne can attest to this, the vestry is getting ready to figure out the budget for next year. And they can't figure out the budget without knowing what our income is going to be. So I've learned that lesson. So, um, so please, please, if you haven't pledged before, please pledge now and, um, and get that in. My second announcement is um, I'm in a play. Um, and it's not a very good one. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, it's not Playhouse Square. It's the local Gates Mills uh, Community Theater Group. And so we're doing, we had been asked to do a play particularly for children. So this is really geared, it's about fairy tales. We redo three fairy tales. Um, it's about um, for kids age five to maybe 10. But if they come in their pajamas, they get a gift certificate to go to Sara's place, the restaurant, and get like free ice cream and chocolate sauce or something, and they get a free bag of candy. So if you know or can borrow any children between five and 10, <laughs> um, opening night is next Friday, so, and it's early because of the kids. So the show is only about an hour or so long. It starts at 6.30 at the Gates Mills Community House right over the bridge here, and then we have a matinee on Sunday, and then the following Friday and Sunday. Um, and then, sorry, one last final thing, because um, I don't have enough going on. So uh, I'm also involved in our first annual chili cook-off for the Gates Mills players. And it's supposed, the weather's supposed to be nice for the next week and then really cold. So this is two weeks from today. We're going to have a chili cook-off in the Gates Mills Community House. There's every kind of chili. There's going to be traditional like beef and bean chili. There's vegetarian chili. There's white chicken chili. There's Arizona chili. I don't even know what that is. There's uh, <laughs> Cincinnati chili and there's sausage chili. So if it's cold and you're in the mood for chili, it's one to three next Sunday, two weeks from today at the Community House. I'm all done. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy, for, for all of your work and making, making the annual campaign fun. And thank you to all of those who have already pledged. And if you're among those who, for whatever reason, don't pledge but support the parish through financial gifts, thank you as well. Uh, Lydia, you have something, I think, to share? Um, that's OK. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
what are you going to do, deacons? I have so much humility. <laughs> Coming off of Becky's cheerful, huge message, um, let's see, I, it's wonderful to be back, and I just, I'm grateful to be with you, it feels like forever. Um, I was involved in a project of 15 photographs and stories that was put into a book, as well as showing at Cleveland City Hall with Cleveland City Council, and then it went on to Trinity Cathedral and had a Dean's Forum on that. and. Then we had something in Brexville as well. It's all on what happens, what can happen, the potential of individuals who were once homeless and or incarcerated. When they are given a second chance of employment, how that can turn an individual around to what many of them told me they always knew was inside. So this is 15 stories of those who are quite candid in the transformation they uh, took and now are really serving others as I hope you will get a chance to read in this book. It, um, so I just wanted to tell you about that. It's going on, but it's good to be back here and take a look at this book. And Thank you. Lydia is giving a copy of the book to us, so it will be in the guild room. So you'll have an opportunity going forward to look at that. Uh, thank, thank you, Lydia. You. Oh, you just a real quick note. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, I came to Bishop. Yes. And John Irwin and myself, Mary Holmes of Delegates. It's, this is weighty, weighty matters. Uh, and I would really appreciate hearing from any of you if you have strong feelings or opinions. Um, I encourage you to go to the website that's the link on our news and notes that will take you to the actual live conference with the three candidates. It's important to our future, and I think for John and Mary and me to hear from you, either by email or telephone, we, we would welcome that. I would welcome hearing from you and, and putting that all, all in the mix. But seeing, seeing them live, I think, is a very different experience than reading on, on the papers that we have in, in their, their presentations from back. So anyhow, um, <coughs> and pray for us. <laughs> yes, uh, whoever we elect on November 20th, that is a long-term relationship. So it's really important that your delegates and Lydia and I will both be voting as clerical members of the diocese. It's really important for us to hear your observations, your perspectives. Please don't call up and, and tell one or more of us, I like this person, not that person. Tell us why. Tell us why. This is, um, discernment is, is a really important process. And discernment means that we need to hear from as many of you as possible about what you see and hear in each of the candidates and who you believe God is calling to be our next bishop. When it comes time to vote, as is the case with our representatives and senators, we will vote our individual consciences of who it is that we truly believe is being called by God to be our next bishop. But part of our ability to do that is that you are willing to share your observations with us so that we have as broad a perspective on those three candidates as possible. Um, Judy mentioned there is a link in the news and notes and it will stay there until it's time for convention. It will take you directly to options for which of the recorded live stream meet and greets you want to listen to. So we, as far as I know, this works, and, and Mary Zupp has made it as easy as possible. So please, please take the time to do that. Any of you have birthdays or, uh, yes? May I say a couple of words to reiterate that? Mm-hmm, please. This decision to vote uh, for a, a bishop is a very, very important decision. As Mother Anne has told us, this is somebody uh, who will guide us for many, many years. I'm a voting delegate. I please tell me, as Mother Anne has said, your feelings, your thoughts, your discernment, your prayers, why? 
We are voting on Tuesday, and our convention follows shortly after that. You may know that our Constitution was written by James Madison. The Constitution of this church was written by James Madison. The same man wrote both the Federal Constitution and the Episcopal Constitution, both of which, to me, are hallowed documents. They operate by your participation. You're going to elect representatives on Tuesday. We are essentially your representatives for the diocesan nomination of the bishop. Please participate. Thank you. Thank you, John. <laughs> yes, I was about to ask about birthdays and anniversaries, and, and several little birdies mentioned to me, Kathy Pender, <laughs> that uh, actually you need a birthday blessing. <laughs> Whether you think you do or not. I believe I do. <laughs> we all we all need we all, all, we all need all the blessings we can. Kathy, I lay my hands upon you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Holy and living God, we give you thanks for the gift to us all of your beloved child, Kathy. And as she begins a new year of life in your service, we ask you to fill her with your grace, that by the power of your Holy Spirit, she may receive all that she needs and all that you desire for her in this year to come. We ask for the gift of health and joy and your peace. And we ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Thank Happy you. birthday. Thank you. And Kathy, thank you for, when I said we're all thankful for you, we really are. Oh. <laughs> oh. I mean, that's always true. I always mean that. If I said that for any of the rest of you, I meant it for you too, but you continue to give of yourself in ways that have been and continue to be very important for this parish, so thank you. Other birthdays or anniversaries? No? I saw a finger going up there. Yes. I was just a reminder of Tom that Tom Tower is alive and well in the old room. Yes. And yummy. <laughs> um, some of you may remember Chief, the parish dog, thanks to the Retta family. Chief passed on to greater glory this past year, um, but there's a new Chief. Different name, but boy, the same personality. So if you have a chance to take a peek and introduce yourself, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God.
our worship this morning continues on page 367. Page 367. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks for grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with blessed Christopher and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we're bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we decide to forgive us.
Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us see the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
166, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for giving us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen.